A lot of people fresh to Odyssey speedrunning ask me, is there anything I should focus on when I'm just starting out? My first answer to this is always movement, and playing the game more will get you better at understanding how to play it. However, there are a few tricks you should definitely learn right at the start. They are simple to learn and worth the time save, so in this video I'm going to show you how to add a little flair right from the get-go. Let's get started. A quick reminder that if you like the content, please hit that subscribe button. It supports the channel a lot and helps me keep making videos just like this one. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do three different tricks. Dino Skip, Seaside Fish Clip, and Moon Cave Skip. These tricks are all useful in the Any% percent category, which is what I recommend for any newcomers to the game. These tricks are easy to practice, easy to learn, and by the end of the video, you'll be able to do them all with ease. If you need some information on the context of these tricks and how they fit into your speedrun, check out the Odyssey Community Discord server. You can find it by accessing the speedrun.com page for Super Mario Odyssey, which I'll link in the description below. Let's start with Dino Skip. This is a trick in Cascade Kingdom, and it lets you get up to the Madame Brutal fight instantly. The normal way is going around the back of this tall rock plateau and revealing a 2D area, but this trick will help you skip all of that. After you collect the first moon, a bridge collapses and reveals your way to your first glance at the Odyssey. Just beyond that is a dinosaur capture and the key to make this trick work. After the short cutscene, jump your way up and capture him. Cascade has trampolines all over it, hidden under rocks. It turns out that the dino can jump really high on these as well. There's one hiding under this rock formation here. You're going to want to step on this trampoline with the dino's left foot and while running, which you can do by holding Y or X. As you rocket into the air, you'll see the boss arena come into view right in front of you. Slightly after the peak of the jump, uncapture the dino with ZL or ZR and dive towards the platform. The arena loading zone here is quite generous. You don't even need to really land on it, but try to get as close as you can, and the cutscene should begin playing. Now, a couple of pointers to make this easier. Sometimes when you approach the trampoline, you'll be on the wrong foot. If you wait for the dino to take a full step, then very lightly tap forward, he'll barely move and take another step, which can let you line up on the correct foot. Also, when you make your dive, there's one particular spot on this ledge that will deny you of the cutscene, and it's on this corner right here. If you make sure to dive clear left or right of this spot, however, you should be just fine. The second trick takes us to Seaside. Surrounding this entire kingdom is an invisible wall, and if you try to swim out against it, you'll keep getting pushed back, but this trick lets you sneak by it, just enough to get out of bounds. All we need is a cheap cheap, which you will have at this point of your run. After you get this moon hidden beneath these sandy piles, make your way over to this spot here. Notice how the sand changes color from blue to yellow towards the edges, and it arrives at a sort of corner right here. Give yourself a little room and boost into that corner. You can boost with Y and B at the same time. If you do this, the fish will push a fair ways into the yellow sand before being pushed back out. If you uncapture the cheap cheap after pushing into the yellow part, the cheap cheap will remain there, stunned. Swim back into the blue sand a fair amount and throw Cappy back to capture the fish again. Once you regain control of the cheap cheap, boost out towards the wall and downwards again, and you will barely nudge out of bounds. Only one thing can really go wrong here. Sometimes when you recapture, you will snap back in bounds suddenly. If this happens, it's because you did not swim Mario back in bounds fully before recapturing the cheap cheap. Mario's position is really important, and Mario needs to clear the start of that invisible boundary. So the next time you try, swim back in bounds just a little bit further and try again. Now that you're out of bounds, you can see a lot of this kingdom from the outside. From out here, we can grab moons that are close to the wall by utilizing another one of the fish's abilities, its spin attack. When the fish attacks, its hitbox extends out really far. From where you clipped in, you can swim downwards and you'll see another moon in a tunnel in the wall. Approach it from the backside and shake your controller to attack. You should be able to grab the moon pretty easily. It may just take a few tries to get used to the depth perception. And from here, we can cheat the Sphinx's treasure vault by entering it in from the back, like this. Inside here is another fast moon. I do want to say, this trick is not completely necessary, but in my opinion, it makes doing seaside easier. The alternative is this notes moon over here, and not only is this alternative slower by almost 8 seconds, it's arguably more difficult as well, trying to keep on track and stay in a straight line to grab them all. 
so there's no harm in adding this neat little fish clip to your runs right away. Now our last trick is at the very end of the game in Moon Kingdom. With two well-placed wall jumps, you'll have to deal with no platforming, no scary captures, no rolling rocks, and most importantly, no Madame Brutal refight by going into the moon caves. Even though this trick has been around for a while, I'll still hear new players don't really know what they're looking for in order to pull it off, so I'm going to set the record straight. First, we're going to make our way back out here, where the Sphinx boy is hanging out. It's around the corner from the moon cave entrance, just follow the wall around to the right. Get up on his head with some jumps and cap dives, or a backflip, or whatever gets you high enough. From this spot, we're going to try and get as high up this back wall as we possibly can. Start with a ground pound jump, and at the very height of that jump, press and hold a cap throw button and aim Cappy into the wall. When Cappy sticks to the wall, move Mario forwards and bounce on Cappy. Make sure you're a small distance away from the wall when you throw Cappy, because if you're too close, Cappy will disappear. And if you're too far away, Mario won't be able to reach him in time. Now, the most important part of the trick begins right here. We need to do a wall jump against this back wall, but the spot we wall jump against is what allows for this trick to work. We can use some visual cues to help us find the right spot. As you rise up the wall, you should see a couple of lines in the rock. There's a lighter colored one over here, and a darker colored one a little bit lower to the right. We need to wall jump in between these, and probably just a little bit closer to the darker line than the lighter one. This will require Mario to maneuver a bit to the left after his cap bounce, so if it helps, you can throw Cappy into the wall to stabilize Mario before he wall jumps. After this wall jump, begin to move Mario over to this parallel wall on the left side. If it worked, Mario will find a place to begin sliding on the wall, and you'll be able to jump again. This ledge above is now easily in reach, so do a cap throw and dive towards it, and you've made it up. If you want to play it safe, you can just jump up here and walk around the bridge from here. Uh, as you get more comfortable with the trick, you can also just jump and dive over to the bridge directly to save some time. Now it's time to explain why this trick works. Typically, the game prevents you from wall jumping effectively on parallel walls. Otherwise, you could just stand in a corner and gain height forever. This first wall in this trick, though, it isn't perfect. It's really jagged. Some of the surfaces are facing in different directions. So that's exactly why the position of the first wall jump is so important. As long as Mario jumps off the wall somewhere in this zone here, the second wall jump should work. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't work the first time, though. Even the easiest tricks take a while to understand, but once you make it up the wall a few times, you'll be confidently racing towards Bowser in no time at all. And that covers it. With these tricks under your belt, you'll be ready to start your journey into speedrunning Super Mario Odyssey. If you have any questions, feel free to drop by my Twitch stream. I'll be happy to help. I'll provide a link to that and a couple other resources for you to use in the description below. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos and to keep the channel going. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.